Hello friends, welcome back to the discussion on brand elements in product and brand management. We were talking about names, we were talking about the relevance of names and we tried to decipher the perspective how names can be generated, what kind of effect a name would give as far as the journey of a brand goes. So many researches have gone into this. After that, we sort of focus focused on URLs and then we talked about the colorful world of logos and had, you know wondered about how people would have worked upon developing logos, what kind of a science design elements would have gone into logos and then I gave you clues on you know from where to fetch the details about these kind of things because they stay, they stay forever. I, I tried to mention in front of you that how Mercedes logo you know is very visible when the car is coming and then what it, it generates as a feeling, as an emotion especially in, in the mind of the owner and a uh, person who is actually fond of this car. So, then carrying forward with this journey and importance of names along with logos, we come to characters and you all know this sweet little girl of utterly butterly delicious Amul and, and several other characters you know KFC. So, and, and all these pictures, these characters they come alive actually after a while they become the part of our lives. They represent a special type of brand symbol, one that takes on human or real life characteristics. See many a times what I have realized is that the importance of the product having a particular character which resonates a feeling in our mind is, is that product becomes important because that character tends to speak with us. And especially I have realized that in case of younger children or people you know who cherish that feeling basically. And, and uh, for example, mascot of Air India, the Maharaja uh, enjoyed a, a kind of a space which, which we remember all through. And there are several stories around these basically, how they came up and how they became a memorable kind of a feature of the brand itself merging so much with the brand that it is difficult to separate both of both of them. So, the human element of brand characters can enhance likability and help create perceptions of the brand as fun and interesting many a times. Then comes in slogans and it is very interesting actually because you see we are progressing for from names to logos to characters to slogans now. And if you will realize there is a genuine progression of one's desire as the originator of the brand that means the founder, the leader, the person who is actually the owner of the brand should I say, the person who has who would have steered the brand. So, if you will look at the situation with his or her perspective you would realize that you know. Uh, for example, imagine yourself keeping uh, you know uh, desiring to put up a name on a product and an organization and, and you have gone through all the things which we have discussed, then definitely you would come to the stage of putting up a slogan, further elaborating that name, that logo, associated characters and that is where slogan comes in. You see they, these are short phrases. And then they communicate descriptive or persuasive information about the brand. There is a genuine human uh, aspect to it as well. We always do that. We start from single word, then we try try to expand that in terms of pictures and visuals and slogans and jingles later on. I'll I'll be talking about that. And many a times we we think of a story and then we come to a single word as well. Many a times, uh, you know, you talk to a director or or uh, or a story writer. He would have. A story in his mind, you would write the story and you would come back to the 
name of that story he would he would put up a term associated with that story so so that also happens but anyways we move from this side to that side and that is where slogans they come in you see they often appear in advertising because you want to expand you want to decipher the meaning of the name and uh, you know uh, other elements as well and they can play an important role in packaging and other aspects of marketing program also and and let's see few of the slogans for example just do it and it's a sort of uh, you know uh, quizzing you uh, that uh, can you recognize these slogans in association with symbols and names yes you would definitely be because these are very famous slogans and first one is nike as you all know so you can surf these i would not be naming all of these you can surf these on google and then you can uh, you know find out Uh, which organization has tried to expand their persona their perspective their reflection of themselves their reflection of their own names through these slogans these slogans are also important in emphasizing upon the positioning of uh, the product and the organization in front of the target customers which is a very important thing because all through the journey of a brand position strengthening positioning generating value of a brand is what has to be done for example india ka dil india ka ac now you 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 remember this you know but but if you don't just serve this and i would not be uh, you know uh, telling you the answer right away daag acche hain is a very famous slogan we all know that you see look into the intelligence the creativity the perspective associated with Uh, the person or people who would have involved in developing this line this this uh, these few words uh, a detergent wherein uh, you know that detergent is is required to clean the clothes and on the other side if you denounce the spots there there can be so much which can be told about but then these uh, creatives these creators they they said daag acche hai now what kind of a perspective they have generated it has worked well for, uh, for them thanda thanda cool cool we all know that and because we are worth it pal banaye magical pal banaye magical here here uh, many a time slogans they rhyme they they put up you know and then we have talked about phonetics also so we have talked about that thing in names but it is uh, that that is very much alive in uh, as far as slogans go so whole lot of a linguistic perspective is associated with the slogans and and uh, keep enjoying those surf for as many as you can and try to find out what would have gone into as far as developing these slogans go now let's come to the most important part or let's say most exciting part and the most creative part jingles because they stay in your mind if randomly i ask you to reminisces some uh, jingles you know there would be so many which would have come to you the beautiful you know songs have been reduced into jingles basically and and uh, many wonderful singers they have devoted their energy creative and uh, creative energy and creative perspective in developing jingles tunes and jingles so so this is a wonderful thing and more or less uh, to me in integrated marketing communication especially advertising part jingles are one of the most attractive parts basically and definitely they not only generate awareness or or propel awareness but most of all they support in the uh, development of retention of that brand's name in as far as jingles go and in uh, you know uh, subsequent sessions probably uh, second session from now i would be talking about brand audit brand research wherein i would be mentioning that there are several qualitative techniques wherein you uh, talk to customers about brand recall and their jingles you know they are a mainstay because because jingles help people uh keep the brands in their minds if if it is in your mind you might think in terms of moving ahead and buying that so jingles are musical messages as you know they are catchy to become almost permanently registered in the minds of listeners 
are not nearly as transferable as other brand elements because of their musical nature. Now, that is a very important part of jingles basically. You see, you, you can sort of uh, uh, let us say uh, think of similar names, you can think in terms of uh, you know uh, some, some other elements, but, but jingles if an organization or a product has you know generated a jingle, no one would be able to copy it so easily. So, they are perhaps most valuable in enhancing brand awareness as we have talked about. Hum me hai hero, that is where Hero Motocop uh, brought in and desh ki dharkan, you know a slogan along with a musical tune. So, so it became a jingle that taste of India amul, so and then googly woogly wooks, you and I, you see remember, remember that, that effect you and I when when uh, that uh, my voice is not so good, but but uh, you see the, the point is that it actually helps and kya aap close up karte hain, that, that was a typical one you all remember that and then washing powder nirma has stayed with us forever, forever and I should commend that, that that actually resonates with nirma, wherever you will hear it even in the slightest of uh, you know uh, mildly also you would you would realize that it is Nirma we are talking of. And Airtel's instrumental tune uh, Mr. A. R. Rahman uh, he did a wonderful job there and, and then Pepsi had so many Oi Bubbly was one of the best and then uh, there are several you know there are several others. So, that is where you know uh, jingles they keep things alive. Now, let us go to other element which is again a very important one and probably I should be spending some time on this uh, packaging. I have talked about packaging with strong relevance when I was talking about product, product management, but packaging supporting branding is a very important thing actually. You know this is related to the activities of designing and producing containers or wrappers for a product. And I would uh, you know suggest you to go to a departmental store today or, or any other day and one of my favorites just stand in front of uh, you know the shelf where chocolates are there or, or let us say if they are keeping those chocolates in refrigerators then then do not stand there just just go to a shelf where they are keeping biscuits or oh, that is one of my favorites individually. Now, you would realize sometimes I feel like purchasing all of them one by one kind of you know. So, so beautiful chocolate cream emanating out of the biscuit and Milano is written over there, there and, and you know it is choco fill kind of the names the packaging, the beautiful picture, you feel like bringing it at home and I all, sometimes I do that uh, although I, I do not eat it so much, but, but definitely. You see that is the power of packaging, it, it, it is not only informative in nature, it is decorative in nature, it is attractive in nature, it has several other features which we will talk about and then it has a huge role associated with whole of the value chain which I will be focusing upon in a short while from now. And then many people they have done immense researches on packaging, the role of packaging in, in uh, you know market development, uh, brand development especially apart from being associated to distribution and supply chain and so uh, those kind of things. So, from the perspective of both the firm and the consumers packaging must achieve a number of objectives as I was talking about. Identify the brand. So, it is, it is largely the only way when you are talking of specially consumer products and many other products for that matter if you want to purchase cement for example. How do you recognize it or, or should I say even you know you have several packs of televisions in front of you, how would you recognize that, that you know which uh, kind of and if you uh, I, I should not be going to that extent, if you consider the outer casing of a product as the as, as uh, you know part of its package somehow you know if many products are of, of that sort. So, the name on that particular outer casing is, is what you know uh, actually makes you uh, motivated towards as far as uh, uh, the product goes. So, convey it, it conveys descriptive and persuasive information, 
facilitate product transportation and protection. Now, this is another very important element and, and we have used lots of science in, in as far as developing the packaging uh, goes. Today, uh, you know delicate of the products, they can be transported and transferred without a scratch basically. So, so and that has all uh, you know happened because of this science and this uh, uh, development. So, and it assists in home storage as well. Many, many times I have seen people collecting uh, you know uh, empty boxes or those kind of things for, for several different kinds of usage as well. And it's it's uh, it's a good thing to do. It it supports in sustainability as well. You don't have to throw everything outside your house. So, and then it supports product consumption as well. Package can become an important means of brand recognition and demonstrating the right content. Packaging can help you, as I was saying. You know, go to the biscuit uh, shelf. So so definitely, you know, point of purchase basically. And then there are aspects associated with you know distinguishing the product of your choice. Attraction is one thing, but you have a particular kind of a product in your mind and so many thousands of detergents are in front of you, so many soaps are in front of you, you randomly go to a particular kind of a product and just pick it up just because of the, the packaging because that actually you know projects the name. Then there are several innovations associated with design aspects associated with as far as the packaging goes. One thing which I should be talking about before I demonstrate a particular kind of an example in front of you. And, and uh, I have talked about this earlier as well, but this is uh, an important element which I should be mentioning in uh, consonance with branding. You see, there are several cases on packaging, but IK furnitures I like most because the story, you know, it the story of their augmentation of production processes, their brand identification, generating a particular kind of a brand value, uh, probably not solely because of packaging, but it started from packaging. Somehow that question was very important for them at one part of time and they realized that furniture it has different kinds of shapes and it is very difficult for you know transporting the complete units. So, furniture must be dismantleable that is one part and that is fine, but again the point is putting everything into a rectangular box. Why rectangular? Primarily because the uh, you know these these uh, carry wagons or trucks or or uh, you know uh, the modes which they are using or everyone uses probably largely they are rectangular in, in as far as their shape goes. So to adjust rectangular boxes in those shapes, they actually imagined all of their products into more or less universal size of or, or if not universal size, but similar shapes of packaging that not only you know enabled them to revisit their designing that enabled them to revisit their production and operations that enabled them to reposition themselves slightly in front of their customers that enabled them to actually redesign and restructure their warehousing also and so on. You see if you will just look at this basically and then you can visit their videos and their website, you would realize that what kind of an impact it has generated in terms of uh, uniquely defining IKEA furnitures or it has supported them that way and then we have talked about uniqueness and those kind of elements and here I am drawing your attention once again towards the brand value chain. And if you look at packaging with the perspective of marketing program investment and then you take it towards the other value stages or the impact of packaging towards the other value stages. And even if you look at at this particular moment, if you look at 
you know packaging as a part of the product and you look at the resonance pyramid you would realize that ikea furnitures has done a wonderful job why am i saying so because they generated a norm for the industry the whole of the furniture industry they got a model out of it everyone started working on the same kind of a perspective around as far as the packaging situation goes and rest is history i would not uh, go endlessly on this subject but i want you to realize that ultimately it can have so many impacts and effects and just to draw your attention uh, if you would remember there was a particular kind of a packaging associated with medicines earlier and today you can transport medicines and keep them uh, you know uh, good for uh, longer life which is very vital very important especially in case of products like medicines and i have already talked about amul milk because of their packaging uh, science they they could uh, you know transport milk to the nooks and corners of this country and everyone is doing so so that is where packaging is playing a very important role and at this moment i am not talking uh, about packaging with reference to uh, you know a, a product only uh, but strengthening the brand perspective now you know chai point for example is one of the first food beverages companies in india to introduce 100% bio degradable packaging now this is again you know we are talking of sustainability the packaging made of bagasse is the fibrous you know bagasse is the fibrous remain of crushed sugar cane uh, when when you squeeze on the juice of sugar cane so bagasse remains now it is used as a biofuel and in the manufacturing of pulp and uh, building materials also and and uh, you know it, it is used in paper as well so they also launched a unique heat retaining juice and throw flask and the team at chai point saw the necessity to invert this flask based on customer demand for tea delivery at their offices and the scalability and the hygiene associated with that now it's it's a very good idea basically you know utilizing bagas for developing packaging to deliver tea at and uh, this is as a degradable kind of uh, they would have saved so much they would have uh, gained the attention of the customers definitely for sure they would have uh, you know gone for a uniqueness element also and and uh, every table having this chai point uh, you know tea uh, in in front of uh, the person that definitely becomes uh, a way of defining things also and so on again i'm drawing your attention towards value stages as well as multipliers at this stage so just visit that chart and try to realize what we are talking about now i will be taking you towards the branding perspective on marketing especially in relation to developing marketing program for developing brand equity so we have gone through elements now how to look at those elements with the perspective of using the intensity of those elements through four p's should i say or let's say developing a marketing program and that is one of the most interesting part because the, the here we are coming up with action with activity here the role of a brand manager actually expands or is supported by marketing team and the sales team as well and that is where you are taking things you you have you have thought about what is to be done with your brand you have all you know you almost defined the value chain or you are going along the value chain and now you want to put things on the ground and that is where this uh, subsequent discussion uh, comes on so you see as firms are dealing with enormous shifts in their external marketing environments and uh, this two years of covid it has again you know it, it might sound repetitive but this will remain uh, forever with us so it has taught us so many things and this this has actually emphasized upon environmental volatility i was just mentioning packaging so covid has actually enhanced the importance of packaging in our lives i was just uh, mentioning about other elements covid has actually enhanced the importance for those elements to you know to live up because because expectations of people is getting you know 
uh, raised or or let's say you know people want something more and then there are there is anxiety and so much of human behavioral change is going on and to retain customers with you in this dire kind of a situation when you are unable to supply uh, things not so regularly although many companies that they have they have tried to do that so it's a difficult part so you see the marketing strategies and tactics have changed dramatically or are continuously changing dramatically rapid technological developments are going on and past two years we all know in in 2020 21 and probably 22 also more or less a major focus of technological institutions have uh, got diverted towards focusing upon you know software development and algorithms and uh, data sciences and ai and so on so because that is what is required that that is going to support uh, different aspects so so whole of the technological development is moving towards you know uh, these kind of things along with that manufacturing processes are also going through lots of technological development one thing which is associated with this kind of a thing is that once you enhance technological capacity in manufacturing processes production capacity would get enhanced by itself and then it makes a lot of sense to produce more but then it requires marketing and sales and it requires branding support greater customer empowerment customer has lots of choices just record the time through which you are watching one channel if you are watching television or let's say internet tv or your mobile phone for 10 minutes record the time for how many seconds consistently have you watched one thing and that is what i am mentioning in terms of customer empowerment fragmentation of traditional media and that is absolutely you know known to us and and if you want to go deeper into the understanding of how you know uh, media is changing how integrated marketing communication is going ahead uh, please visit uh, my videos on integrated marketing communication course also on nptel now growth of interactive and mobile marketing options that is definitely become a very important kind of a thing basically and here again i have I've talked about these things in, in uh, you know uh, imc also and in product management also wherein growth of interactive options have actually enhanced the reach of the companies to the customers but then it has actually made customers behave in in fluctuative manner even the loyal customers they get tempted to test different kinds of products for example if you will just try to write on a piece of paper that which are those products which you have been consistently using in the same form with the same name for past 3 years and i'm talking of especially you know consumer products apart from those products which are not being prescribed to you so then channel transformation and disintermediation that is how things are going on and a whole lot of a changes and we we should be naming amazon and flipkart and those kind of people uh, organizations supporting you know uh, this this kind of thing increased competition and inter, uh, industry convergence and i have talked about competition earlier as well here direct indirect substitution alternatives all those elements would come alive which i have discussed with you earlier globalization and growth of developing markets today globalization again is changing you know its form basically we are intensely globalized but then covid has taught us that probably we have to be self reliant along with being globalized so so make in india is an important thing in today's world and and then definitely we have to be associated with uh, whole of the world as well so so it has to be you know a detailed exchange but again the point is to what extent in which kind of products and these are the elements which are going to uh, you know help organizations in redefining their marketing programs for developing activities and actions to support their brand value chain and brand exercise heightened environmental community and social concerns social concerns are very important yesterday i was uh, addressing a, a seminar uh, of uh, uh, you know senior executives 
and I talk to them about what mobile is going to do to the lives. And my question was basically associated with technological aspects of uh, mobile manufacturing and then technology associated with mobile phone development as a device. But randomly and rapidly the most of the answers which came to me were related to the social aspects of mobile communication and that is what we are talking of at this moment. Severe economic recessions they have taught us so many things. There was an economic recession in 2008. I would not say that there is a recession in uh, COVID period, but recessionary phases we have seen. We, we have seen the repercussions, we have seen you know uh, the downturns or, or let us say uh, a kind of reduction in economic growth. So, so that would be more appropriate to say and then you see again branding is deeply associated with keeping oneself up the waters if not growing at all. So, I would be coming back to you with an intense discussion on all the four P's or let us say developing marketing program for enhancing strengthening brand equity and just revisit your marketing lessons till then I will be seeing you goodbye.